We're going to spend the next 25 minutes or so taking your questions for the team and ownership and management. Before we do open up the floor, I want to share just a couple notes about this team. I think it's important for you guys to all know that this is an organization that has long believed in the success of Overwatch. This is a group that signed an Overwatch team when the game was still being played in beta. And that kind of early belief in the future of Overwatch, that status as a first mover, really led to some unprecedented success competing across the globe. Many of you know that the former Team Envy went undefeated and won the championship in Overwatch Contenders last fall. That tradition and that legacy is what the Dallas Fuel plans to build on. Assemble a roster that features some of the most skilled, the most competitive players from around the world, and is also the most internationally diverse team in this league's inaugural season. So we have nine players on the roster today from eight different countries. And we hope today that you'll get a little glimpse that throughout this season that not only are they the most competitive, the most skilled in the world, but they're also some of the biggest and best personalities in this league. Um, that being said, this team's got one goal for this season, and that's to bring a championship home to Dallas later this summer. So with that, we will open it for questions. We do have the full team, our coach Kyle Souter, GM Matt Taylor, and owner Mike Rafael here for you today. Who's first? All right, front row. You can just stand up, announce your name, the alley you're from, and if you'd like the question to go to a specific person, let's do that. Uh, this is going to be a, anyone at home. Uh, my name is Brandon, by the way, from Overwatch Score. Um, you just brought up actually bringing home a championship specifically to Dallas. Um, in that same vein, what has the team done to Texasify itself? <laughs> That's not a word, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is anybody out there buying cowboy boots and hats and stuff? What are you doing to appeal to your more local fan base? Because that seems to be a really big deal for every team we've seen so far. There's the Valley and London, it's, it's a big issue for endemic fan bases to be able to invest in the team. So what are you guys doing to make that happen? Oh, uh, T uh, so I think it's <clears throat> one of the first things I think that's significant. I mean, from the, from the inception of the team, being a Dallas home team, you know, the color blue. I mean, I think that, that that's a kind of obvious answer. I mean, we we instituted kind of color scheme in our team brand to represent the city of Dallas and its traditional sports teams that have often worn the color blue. Uh, in addition to that, you know, we. The team name itself is representative to the growing energy sector in Texas and within Dallas itself. Uh, so that, that uh, is another obvious kind of part of Texas, Texas supplying, I guess is what you said. I don't know if that's a, a way to put it, but to, to make it more uh, of a home feel for the fans in Dallas. Um, in addition to that, you know, I, I was born and raised in Texas, so uh, I'm a native Texan. Um, you know, my partner Ken Hirsch and, and the Hirsch Interactive Group are also you know, obviously ingrained in, in the Dallas community, so we we understand what the fans in, in Dallas expect, and I think you know the whole field of the organization is certainly going to be similar to what the fans in Dallas are used to in terms of us going out and trying to field a very highly competitive team. I think Dallas is a city that's synonymous with being very competitive and winning. You know, their traditional sports franchises, uh, all of them have you know won world championships in their respective sports. So you know we're we're trying to build a team that's that's very much a competitive roster. Uh, in addition to that, I think you'll see some things pop up soon where uh, we plan to hold fan meetups and watch parties and uh, fan day events that have a very Texas feel to them. So uh, I would say stay tuned in that regard. Thank you. Hi there, Sabrina Maston from Over Bob. Uh, some of you have some intense streaming personalities <laughs> and um <laughs> wonder how you feel this can affect the fuel brand <laughs> who wants to start yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i feel like that was sort of directly to me <laughs> i didn't really get a final answer for that one I'm just gonna speak. Um, when I got picked up, they, I mean, I, I think Mike knew what he was getting into. Um, 
<laughs> and it was I was and it was it was I knew what I was getting into as well. Um, I try my best not to uh, impact negatively the the brand. Of course, um, I'm always super proud to represent this brand. I think this was probably the team I wanted to be in the most, and it was the one that I, I thought was the less likely to be in. So, with everything in perspective, um, I'd say. This is a tough question. <laughs> I'm trying my best to represent represent them in a positive light, a positive way, and I hope that I think I'll do all in the future, and I think I'm doing decent right now. Uh, disregarding the recent events, actually, I'll do it. I'll do it. Felix is right, and we, we kind of knew what we were getting into. And, and, and one thing I think our organization uh, really, really cares a lot about is that you know we're, we're in a new kind of modern era of, of media, and, and at the end of the day, we respect who our players are. And I don't. I, I tell every player when they sign with our team that they shouldn't. Uh, they shouldn't feel like they have to change themselves. And you know, no matter what some people might think of. Of uh, the way some players, you know, are when their personality is when they when they live stream. You know, you have the choice of turning it off, right? You, know, you have the choice of turning it off the screen. And you know, I think one of the things that we direct our players uh, not to do is, is to be offensive, um, and you know, super offensive in the sense that you know you're you're affecting a wide group of people that you know you make them have the worst day when they watch your stream. And, and I think we've done a, a great job avoiding that. And so. You know, some people can't handle the language every now and then, or can't handle uh, you know some screaming and yelling. You know, that's they have an option of turning the stream off until one of our players does something that, that uh, morally doesn't coincide with what we represent and the way we are. Uh, then we'll take action. But that, that hasn't happened until uh, until that happens, we won't feel, you know force our players to do anything or change their personality. So Felix or Siegel or Mickey or Beck or Coco, any of these guys on the table right now, uh, they, are, they are who they are and we want them to be who they are on their screens and, and that's just the way we feel. Um, I'll jump in again, uh, just to close off, I had some more inspiration. Um, I guess I'd say that um, I would represent the brand um, in my own way and I think that all the players and all the people that stream and all the people that have their own social medias will represent the brand uh, in their own way. And uh, with the person that I have on, on my own stream and my own social media, um, people can choose to watch me or not. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of what I do and I don't want to change it too much. I think the best part about this team is the fact that you can watch, you know, you can watch me, I'm kind of a more chill streamer, you can watch XQC, you can watch Tucker, we're all very different people. And to basically celebrate that diversity within the team, not only within nationalities, but also within personalities, and showing it on our streams is one of the best parts about the team. Hey there, Adam from Action Esports, uh, also from the US. Uh, so while we're on the topic of streaming, uh, Today we talked about the kind of partnership with uh, Twitch and broadcasting for the Watch League and stuff. Uh, Twitch is known for having a very um, interesting and passionate community surrounding it. Um, and that has had a, a dramatic effect on, on both streamers and content creators of, of all sorts. Uh, how do you think the ongoing relationship with, with Twitch and its community is going to affect both your Watch League and your brand in particular? Um, can I do that one? Is it Okay, um, I feel like Twitch is super unique in its, in its own way. Like, the viewers like to uh, participate in what's going on in the game, in the chat, and I think people overlook the experience of the chat and how important it is. And I think with streamers, with our own emotes and our own communities and our own ways of uh, joking around and when stuff, when stuff ha happens in the game that are uh, recurrent, uh, the reactions that people have in the chat, I think it's, I think it's like super cool and it's always very enjoyable for everyone to have a, uh, an experience in the chat like that. Yeah, just have some fun and yeah, it, 
Yeah, I think, I think you're doing spot on. <clears throat> that's that's part of, of, of why esports is kind of this modern phenomenon as a sport is because we have real connectivity. And, and although most people overlook it, I think Felix is right, but if you're a real kind of true uh, fan of esports or fan of just Twitch community in general, you understand that that connectivity can be so simple as you know having a you know Felix or Brandon have like custom remotes. All these players do on their streams, but you know custom remotes. So when when or little nuances when when Felix does something crazy, people you know tend to say talkers or you know on chat, on you know, and then they they drop a you know it's easy clap you know both in the, in the push chat and that connectivity is a specific connection that someone like Felix has with the fans who are watching him. And when he goes in Overwatch League in a match and does something like that, the Twitch push out will be full of them. And that's a special connection that he has with, with fans. And that's something you just don't really find too often in other traditional mainstream sports. So the ability for you know, our players to connect with fans like that and have them engage with Overwatch League in that regard when they're playing in their matches is something that's really unique to Twitch. And it's very important for us to have Twitch on board as a, as a distribution partner. Uh, I guess I'll just say, like, I think it's really important having the link on Twitch because it's such an ease of access to, uh, you know, all our own personal platforms. You know, almost every single player in you know, Watch League uses Twitch as a way to broadcast their own internet events. So having, you know, Overwatch League deep broadcast on the same platform, I think is really going to help uh, promote, you know, the player and the players individually and the league together. Yeah, that, that's coming from the only Australian in the Overwatch League. So, <laughs> you know, I expect when, uh, when he does something amazing in the games, you'll see a lot of, a lot of Australian flags and Aussie, Aussie, Aussies in the chat. So, you know, that's important. That's, that's a specific example. I think you'll, you'll definitely see. So look out for, for when Scott does something great in the games and look at the chat. You'll see all those Australian flags. Great. Um, hello, uh, Nathan Fusco with Double Tap from the U.S. Uh, this is actually for Siegel. Um, this past year, you've made the decision to step away from professional gaming and kind of just become a full-time streamer. I want to talk a little bit, if you could, about um, what went in that decision, why did you decide to come back, and what was it about Dallas Fuel that you decided to join? Because you probably had many suitors. <clears throat> I mean, the, the decision to step away from professional play was because there weren't any land tournaments. probably most of uh, 2017. Uh, all there really was was contenders for Apex, and none of the teams I could join were going to go to Apex, and the contenders were later in the year. So it was, it was a natural decision for me to take a step back. It wasn't anything like, you know, I don't want to play competitively. It was more of, there's not much going on right now. It's all the Watch League. And so let's just take a step back, chill out, we grow the Watch League. And when it comes to Dallas, it's, it's, when I talked to all the different teams, I felt that the vibe I got from Dallas was, we don't really care about your stream in terms of, that's very, very appealing because one of the worst things that I was scared about was having to join a team and then only caring about my stream. Because as a big brand, I guess, if you're wanting to become a competitive player, the thing you're worried about are teams that are valuing for your brand or that like, that's what they care about the most. And yeah, I'm sure you know Dallas does care about that, but when I talked to them, they talked about like this is the play, like this is the role we want you to fill in the team. We think you can sell these heroes and these team comps, we need to fill this whole team comp, you know. And that's gameplay centric. And the brand was also there, but it's not necessarily the main focus. And that's why this team appealed to me so much. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Benjamin from uh, GameStar Germany. Um, because you talked about, well, there will be uh, many Australian flags uh, for uh, Casa, and people from other regions uh, won't be able uh, watching many of the games live because it's in the US and the sun and so on. Could it be a disadvantage for uh, your team because uh, well, you have many players uh, from uh, Europe? Uh, I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't. It, it can affect us in some ways in the sense that, uh, you know, many of the home countries of our players, I mean, I think we have quite a few from Europe, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, their home, their home countries are going to have tough times watching the matches live. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's impactful. Uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, is that something that's a, a huge disadvantage? I don't think so. I think, you know, I think the personalities on the team all reach, reach out globally. You know, even, you know, somebody like, 
you know, Tiny Wave is from Finland, and it's a very it's a smaller country, but, um, you know, he has fans from all over the world, certainly. And so, you know, I think that uh, it's tough because we want to reach every home country of all of our players and make sure that all the fans of those countries can, can watch the matches. But uh, at the same time, I think that in the grand scheme of, of Overwatch League, we're, we're here to reach, reach out to the entire world. And so uh, lots of people can watch the matches live. Um, many can catch the video on demand, the review of the matches, and can still watch them. Um, and so uh, I don't think it's going to you know, hinder our business in the long run. I think it's just, it's just a minor, um, it's a minor uh, thing that we have to adjust to, the fans have to adjust to in those countries. Well, for me, uh, all of my hands, my grandmother is 87 years old, and my granddad is 88, and they wake up to watch every single match, even if it's during the night, 4 a.m., and that's pretty insane. And it's not like the time differences uh, that time differences aren't that big for them. They're like retired. They can push the game. Yeah. Uh, I'm Matt from Business Weekly Taiwan. Um, I'm wondering that since Dallas Field is now only uh, the only team in the league that has the jersey sponsorship, so could you share more about like how you make the sponsorship with the Jack in the Box and how the meaning of having a fast food brand? Your jersey. I guess I'm queued up again on this one, so uh, <laughs> I, I can talk a little bit about it, sure. So, um, I, all I can say is that Jack and Box has been an amazing partner from the very beginning. Um, they obviously saw an opportunity and believed in Overwatch League as much as we did because we had to sell that sponsorship uh, within a, basically a one month window before, you know, the preseason began for us to have them on our jersey up here. So uh, I would say Jack in the Box took a, a big leap of faith with us um, based on their belief that esports is such a great place to advertise and reach a target audience. Um, they have also been very uh, cordial in, in the sense that they don't really demand a lot for us. I mean, what you see is is really the, the product of our players actually enjoying Jack in the Box and uh, enjoying, you know, taking some visits to get, get food from Jack in the Box. And I think the fans have really attached themselves uh, to the brand. And, and I, I think in some ways it's become a bit of a, um, you know, just a, a running thing that makes people smile because, you know, Jack, the, the brand Jack in the Box plus, you know, an Overwatch League team isn't necessarily the, the, the first thing that you would uh, expect to see on our jersey. And so, the fans actually have been really great about supporting the brand too. And uh, right now, all I can tell you is that everything is, is really harmonious in the relationship. I think Jack and Box is extremely happy. We're extremely happy. I think the players are having a lot of fun with the partnership, and so are the fans. And so uh, everything is good on that front. Um, but certainly, it was it was something that uh, Jack Jack and Box deserves a lot of credit for supporting us uh, as a big sponsor and partner in this team without um, having a lot to go on. All right, guys, we have one more question. One more question. Hi, guys. Sean from the Competitive Overwatch Club. Uh, this was from Mike, actually. So, obviously, the e-classical optic and uh, and we, yes. <laughs> um, it's okay. Was it planned for both teams to go for Texas? Um, yeah, no, this, is, this is actually, I, I don't think anybody's ever covered this, so it was maybe some really juicy news for a lot of people. But, uh, you know, we, we had no idea, we had no idea that they were going to commit to, to move to Texas. Um, we had maybe some inklings of it. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we definitely, I think, took the biggest step in taking a large investment first from a Texas-based organization and committing to the move. Um, we had no idea they were going to enter Overwatch League. I actually don't think they were going to enter, I'll just be honest, I don't think they were even going to go into Overwatch League until they discovered we were. Uh, that's, that's my honest opinion. You have to ask them about that because uh, all the signs told me that they had no plans to, to sign an Overwatch League team or, or, or buy a franchise until they discovered we were moving to Dallas. 
So you can ask them about that one. Uh, but once they found out we were, we were headed to Dallas and we owned the spot, I think that, that maybe moved them a little bit to uh, go and buy that Houston franchise. So um, no love loss, you know, in the, in the rivalry, but obviously, you know, we, we're cordial with those guys. They're, they're good friends of mine and, and our ownership group. And um, all around, it's, it's actually making them be the, the, a great rivalry, I think, to be able to watch them. So we're happy to have them in Texas because um, it's going to be fun you know, beating them in, in one state. All right, that wraps up the Dallas Field. Thanks a lot, guys. Good luck in the season.